Kimberly, a college student, is shown in a car driving with her friends to Daytona Beach for a vacation. While they are standing on the highway, an old lady beggar with a bag approaches them. All of the cans from that bag are scattered on the road. Ignoring her, they avoid assisting her and begin the car. On the way, they observe a school bus where the students were shouting the word pileup. Only Kimberly notices them. Turning on the radio, she comes to know it was the same day when that flight had crashed before a year. She switches the channel of the radio and a song is played named Highway to Hell. She takes it awkward. Kimberly also notices the other people on the highway. A logging truck was going ahead before them which had the big logs. Kimberly feels as if something wrong is going to happen. She also gets many clues as something is going to occur here. Suddenly. All logs begin to fall on the road as the chain of truck is broken. Falling on his car, a log crushes the car of police officer who is there. And there is also the bike rider who is also dead while crushing under his bike. While the businesswoman, mother and son's cars are also exploded along with it. Kimberly's car is also crashed here but they were all alive. A boy's sports car is also crashed which strikes the truck but he starts burning instead of dying. A truck comes from the front side and crushes them all. Scene has changed and it is revealed that all are imaginations of Kimberly. She was still on the highway but gets frightened. She was unable to get what she has viewed now. She takes it a nightmare. Then that old lady proceeds her who had also been imagined by her. In the same way, all cans are fallen down from her bag. Kimberly is still thinking that a school bus passes from there. It was the bus of those students who were going on that flight to Paris in the previous part. The radio broadcasts the same news as Kimberly turns on the radio, and she was aware that the song Highway to Hell will be played, and it happens the same. Being frightened, she reverses her car. The traffic was blocked because of her stopped car. All were caught in traffic which had been imagined by Kimberly. The other main character of this movie is also a police officer named Burke who was also caught in the traffic jam. Coming near the car of Kimberly, he asks the cause. She tells him, there is a great accident which is going to occur here. Burke asks her to get off the car. At the same time, a truck is passing by. Kimberly informs him that accident will be caused by this logging truck. The accident happens while she is discussing what was happening. She couldn't figure it out. Suddenly, she notices a sign there which has written numeral 180 indicating the flight 180 shown in the previous part. A truck is coming from her backside but Officer Burke saves her from it. But all three friends of Kimberly become the victim. Everything was opposite in reality as compared to her imaginations. Because her friends had the last turn to die but they died before. Kimberly was happy that she had saved herself and others. All survivors are seated with Officer Burke. While interrogating Kimberly, it is revealed that Kimberly faced the same as Alex faced who was the survivor of the flight explosion of the part I. Here it is exposed that Alex is also no more. But one more survivor named Clear is alive who has locked herself at a place to protect her. No one believes. How can a person avoid his death? But they were all happy as they had survived. One of the boys who had won 2.5 million lottery goes to his apartment after a great shopping. He notices some stale noodles in the pan, wasting them through window. He begins to cook something new for him. He takes the Chinese dish from the refrigerator. A stuck magnet on the refrigerator has fallen into this dish. He keeps it in the oven without checking it. He was also frying something in the pan. He also checks his gold wristwatch and also feels happy while wearing the ring. Suddenly, oven is sparked. The ring is dropped down directly into the sink garbage disposal from his hand. He immediately gives hand to catch it, but he is unable to free his hand because of that gold wrist watch. At the same time, pen had caught fire while oven had electric circuit. He tries to blow out the fire using a cloth. Contrarily, fire is spread out the house. He somehow takes his hand out from the sink garbage disposal, but all room windows have shut down when he observes. He leaves his room, breaking the window. His room is exploded as he is going down the stairs. He attempts to go down through hanging ladder of hooks but it was ineffective. After a struggle, it works and he comes down. While going, he slipped on the noodles thrown by him. Then a caught upside ladder is pricked into his eye after falling which causes his death. It was pathetic scene. On the other side, Officer Burke is shown who was investigating the survivors of Flight 180. He comes to know that the survivors had become the victim of the mysterious accidents later. It is also revealed here that Alex was dead because of the fallen brick on his head and Clear was also with him at the time of this occurrence. On the other side, the survivors of the highway are still excited, but they are disturbed as the TV broadcasts the recently dead boy. Kimberly moves to the psychiatric ward because she wanted to interrogate Clear after meeting. Clear suggests that you will have to concentrate on the signs, because signs are the only clues which can put them safe. Here it is known that Kimberly's imaginations are showing the deaths from the end to the beginning. It means the last victim will be dead in the beginning while the first victim will meet his end in the last. 
Kimberly leaves from there in anger when Claire does not agree to help her while asking. Reaching at house, she meets Officer Burke who had started to believe Kimberly. Then Kimberly observes the pigeons outside the window. She comes to know through this clue that next victims are those mother and son. They both leave in their search. Contrarily, Claire is shown who is thinking, it is better to die than this life. At last, she thinks to leave the psychiatric ward. That mother had brought his son to a dentist where a mysterious music was playing which was also played before. Constructional working was in process at that place. Consequently, many pigeons were striking with window pane. Dentist was finding difficulty to concentrate because of them, so he makes him inhale the laughing gas instead of injecting him. A pigeon comes inside due to the breakage of a window pane when dentist is treating. Dentist goes outside to have a look. Here the oxygen had stopped of that child. Meanwhile, a toy has fallen into that kid's open mouth. As a result, the oxygen is completely stopped. At the same time, the dental assistant protects him, reaching there. They leave safely from there. They check that Kimberly and Officer Burke are coming from while shouting the word pigeons. Hearing it, that kid goes to the pigeon and a heavy and big glass falls on him which puts him into death. And his mother starts weeping a lot. Next day, Officer Burke calls all survivors for a meeting. He leaves Kimberly at her house where they meet Clear who leads them to a guide. That guide tells them only new life can beat death. While they are talking that Kimberly visualizes a lady is drowned into a lake while driving a van. Here they remember that an expectant lady was also the survivor who was driving a van. Officer Burke tells that she had also not come for interrogation. They understand the death plan, and they say, we need to save Isabella's baby. Being a police officer, it was not difficult for Burke to search Isabella, because he had informed all police officers of the city. Next day, all come to Officer Burke's building. It is shown that his building's elevator doors were creating problem. A mysterious song is being played which was known as Death Song. They get together and Clear tells that next target is the survivor mother. They will have to be careful about the clues if they want to secure their lives. Hearing it, that survivor and a lady leave from there. She had lost the meaning of life because her son was no more. A survivor who was drug addict notices a clue as they leave. He notices a shadow of men holding hooks. That person is with them in the elevator. Clear immediately calls that lady but cell phone is dropped down in hurry. A hook is caught in her shirt as she bends to pick up the cell phone. She is frightened knowing that a person holding hook is going to finish her. She begins to run outside the elevator but the elevator doors had problem. That lady's head is caught between elevator doors. They cannot do a favor even after the arrival of Clear, and her head is detached from her body. Officer Burke is reported. That expectant lady has been caught by the police. They are about to leave from there. That the same survivor who was escaping with that lady begins to shoot himself, but gun does not fire while it had full magazine. It was not his turn so it happened. They move to the police station. That lady begins to suffer the childbearing pain there. An officer leaves from there, seating her in her own van, so that they may leave to hospital. While conversing, they know that they have already defeated death. Then everyone reveals his story. How did they beat death at the moment? Then Kimberly reveals she was moving to a mall with her mother. She stops to watch the news. Meanwhile, some people had left after finishing her mother and she was survived. It is told here that the survivors of the flight explosion in part one had cost to save them because of their later death and death had to revive its plan again. So it is working in reverse order. It means these people may also meet their end if those survivors did not leave that flight. Now they all were going to that lady. Suddenly, their car is crashed into a farm due to the tire puncture. Officer Burke reports, calling in an accident and leaves because that expectant lady had no time. On the opposite side, all other survivors were also saved but a businesswoman had entrapped in that car. Rescue workers are trying to release her from that car, coming there. Suddenly, she is dead there because her airbag is activated. Her car fuel had spread in the surroundings, coming from the car. At the same time, surroundings catch fire as cigarette slips from her hand. As a result, car is exploded and drug addict's body parts are dismembered. Now three last survivors were left including Kimberly, Clear and Officer Burke. They are driving to hospital, taking that expectant lady. That Kimberly begins to visualize again, that a doctor will take that lady's life. They reach the hospital, and Clear goes to check the survivor who injured in an accident. Now it was his turn, because his medical oxygen cylinder pipe was removed. The doctor is stopped by both of them about whom she had visualized that she will end that lady. On the other side, the lady's baby comes into the world. They were excited because a new life has come into being. They give this news to Clear. Instantly, 
Kimberly again visualizes. The childbearing lady was not going to die in that accident. It means they have not changed anything. Clear moves to that wounded survivor hurriedly. There is a, an explosion as she opens the door. Clear and survivor are both dead. Then Kimberly understands that she is viewing herself in her vision, not anyone else. She had known. What should she do? Taking the ambulance, she directly jumps into the lake. Officer Burke also follows her while jumping and he attempts to rescue Kimberly, but no vain. Darkness had prevailed before her eyes and her breath stopped working. Coming into the senses, she glimpses the same doctor whom she had visualized as she will kill that expectant lady, but she had given the breaths to Kimberly at this time, and this new life had blocked death. Now she and Officer Burke could survive comfortably. After a time, a scene is shown where they are taking lunch with many people, where they come to know that their friend was also the rescuer of someone. Hearing it, they are got upset because they were aware about the death plan. Then their barbecue grill is exploded and the standing family member is taken by the death. Here the movie ends.